factor. It's the pause and it's the breath. These two components, the need to slow down, the need to come back into harmony and balance with our bodies, with our minds, with our hearts. It's through the breath after that pause mm -hmm. that we bring ourselves into this beautiful alignment. If we are in the trenches, if we are in the darkness, if we are in the shadow, breathe. If we are in the light, we are experiencing ecstatic bliss and we are here and really rooted in our purpose, breathe. All of that is connecting us back to our soul. It is connecting us back to our truth. It is connecting us back to our power. And when you are rooted in your power, you are unstoppable. You are here as what I perceive to be the awakening of this light warrior that mm. is coming and being birthed through all of us to use your voice, to be in that place where you are in a full fuck yes to life and you are <laughs> using your life force to serve, to empower, to inspire and all of that. Between the breath work and Gene Keys and the way that you help me understand how those work together, I feel like you saved my life, but you didn't, you gave me access. You brought me on the bridge that you walk and continue to walk authentically every day so that I could save myself. Hey, Christopher, welcome to Fire and Soul. I am truly honored to have you here. Oh, it's it's such an honor to, to be here and to be in this conversation and uh, just truly remarkable everything you're doing and just so grateful for for you and for um, being here. I feel the exact same. And, you know, before we open up into what I know will be a really juicy healing living transmission that I'm so excited and honored to share with my community. I want to honor you uh, on a couple of personal things because the work that you do and the mission that you are on has opened me, shifted me, expanded me, and deepened me into my own divine alignment, which is the mission of Fire and Soul's conversations in ways that I could not have expected. And so just to share real briefly, I've been on a pretty big healing journey as all of my listeners are, as I know that you are, and so many of us. And um, at the very beginning of the year, I knew that I needed to find a breath work that worked for me. I'd tried so many others in the past, and I literally put out a request to a few of my girlfriends that are certified breath work trainers and teachers and facilitators. And I said, can you just record like 10 minutes for me? I just want something on demand. You're not going to believe this, but I didn't know that breath work apps existed. <laughs> and I just didn't like I whatever call it my generation you know and so I didn't even think to look there but I wasn't meant to and so she was like well I might be able to like in a month because she was traveling and another one said well I don't know if that would be right because of, of the academy that she got certified through. and it's like oh I didn't know these things right but then I was basically on my knees at my altar like I regularly do and I was asking basically begging my my team my my angels and guides I need help I don't know how to unhook myself from certain things that um, I feel snagged by and I do so much deep inner work. I need help. What am I not seeing? What are the blind spots? Plots? Please show me, God. And within about three days, Aaron Apke, your dear friend, whom I've been following for years now, put out this Breathe with Cannabis workshop. I hadn't heard of you or Beats and Breath or Ryan, the conscious cannabis dude, and anyway, it was a full yes. I didn't even I didn't even read what it was that I was signing up for. I just knew that I was supposed to go. And I couldn't wait for February 15th, which is the first time. Anyway, through that first transmission with you and Aaron and Ryan, I got introduced to Beats and Breath. I got introduced to Breathwork in a way that finally worked for me. And that was about a four, almost five hour journey, way beyond your workshop that was almost three. I continued on at my altar and I got the gifts that I knew that I needed, at least from the breath work and really connecting me and helping me break loose so much that I didn't even know needed to be broke loose. I was connected to my authentic life force, maybe for the first time in that way. Mm. But then it was a few weeks later where you offered up this pathway to purpose workshop and it was free and it was how the gene keys and breath work come together to truly get us on the path. And again, I was like, wait, what? I heard about Gene Keys two and a half years ago. I went and got my profile. I had no access to it at that point, if you know what I mean. I couldn't even connect to it. It was like, huh? 
And <laughs> between all the work of the last two and a half years, your breath work beats and breath app and all that, because I had done like almost a hundred transmissions at this point, gene keys finally came to life in the way that you described it, where I had yet another profound healing. And now I'm working with the gene keys. I'm working with your breath work app beats and breath every single day, meditation, sound healings and breath work. And I feel like a different human. I feel like the human I was always meant to be. It doesn't mean my shadow shit isn't up. It just means that I now know the soul map that I chose. The breath work weaves me into my purpose and helps me liberate where I get stuck in those frequencies of shadow, right? So I just have to say like, and now I've shared it with so many of my groups and my private clients, they're all loving it. And this is the first time that I've shared it on the Fire and Soul podcast because I haven't had a moment. I've been working with guests. I haven't done private. So I just want to honor you because of the path that you've been on and what you're helping to open in everyone, including me, I just want to bow in gratitude to you, my friend, because you're doing profound work and bringing technologies together in ways that I believe are going to be an absolute global game changer as we all walk toward the new earth. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Thank you. I receive. Thank you so much. I deeply, deeply appreciate those words and you know, it's you and the type of person that I really wanted to create all of this for somebody that has that passion, that fire in their soul that wants to deepen in their own healing as well as their own expansion and really be that change maker, that leader, that person is in service of the world and allow this modality of sonic breath work to really support those on that path. And like, you're the perfect client avatar. So thank <laughs> you for the beautiful testimonial and words. And I accept and I receive and may this reach as many people as possible possible that need this medicine. So thank oh, you. Oh, yes. All right. Let's talk about a little of your backstory, because when you opened up that pathway to purpose workshop, I was so moved over and over and over again about hearing about your journey. So I'd love for you to introduce yourself in the way that you feel called to our listeners and, and viewers. Yeah, I would love to. Um, thank you for the space and the time. And you know, my journey, just like everybody else, perhaps listening to this right now, have had our ups and downs, our challenges, our twists and turns that we've gone through on our path that have created an open space for us to discover who we truly are and how we're designed to serve. Um, because I truly believe that everybody has these core gifts that we were born with that we've brought into this lifetime to utilize in service of the whole. And that's sort of a key principle of the gene keys, which we'll touch on later. So for me, as this passionate, intuitive, sensitive, uh, young adult, there was something in me that knew there was more. And it, this, this podcast name is very fitting, Fire and Soul. There was this fire within my soul that was wanting to be birthed, that was wanting to be shared and expressed but I didn't know how I was finishing my master's degree. This is back in 2012, um, going through this whole entire program for organizational leadership and on paper, things look good. I had a great corporate job. I was getting paid. Well, I was partying all the time. I had plenty of beautiful women around me as a man in his mid twenties. It was great. <laughs> but over time, I started to feel this weight where I wasn't living according to my values. And the reason I share that is because your values are your fundamental driving force of your soul. And if you don't know your values and you're not in touch with them or aligned with them, you're going to feel disconnected and empty. And so this was me, mid-20s, had this corporate job, climbing the ladder, doing everything I was supposed to do by you know society's terms. And Inside, I felt super empty. I felt lost. And I was praying, show me a sign. I know this is not where I'm meant to be. I have this grand entrepreneurial spirit that just wants to fly and give back and do all of these things. And the values of helping other people, making a difference, travel, adventure, spirituality, all of these things I honored, I was not fulfilling. Mm. And so one day I'm driving home on the highway and I see a beautiful billboard on the on the right hand side as I'm driving home at 5 p.m. in traffic and it says are you ready to answer the call oh. and 
said at the bottom, sponsored by the Peace Corps. And I was like, what is the Peace Corps? So I go home, I Google Peace Corps, comes up for anybody listening. It's essentially an American governmental uh, sector of the American government that brings people to all corners of the world in over 80 different countries to serve for two years as a health, business, agriculture, volunteer, teaching English, and so on. And so I went through this process of applying after I figured out what it was. It was like speaking to all these parts, going to a distant country and so forth. Long story short, after a year and a half, it's a very long, arduous process, I got accepted. It says you have seven days to decide. You've been accepted to serve as a health and business volunteer in Tanzania, Africa. Hmm. I was like, I wasn't Hmm. planning on Africa, but... (laughs) Uh, let's, let's do this. I took all this time to apply and go through these tests. It was that defining moment. So long story short, I lived there, uh, in, in Africa and Tanzania in a remote village for two years of my life, no running water, no electricity, no modern amenities, no internet, nothing. I had to go to the well for water, cook over a fire, bathe and using a bucket bath. So, you know, I lived very primally. I lived with the community. I lived amongst nature. And all of this was a perfect storm to to really catalyze me and bring me within my own inner worlds where I had this space and time to contemplate what is my purpose? Why am I here? And all of these questions spiraled into meditation practices, writing, reading, all of these things. And after that experience, which of course I can go much deeper into, but I won't, that experience of that two years living in that village was what I needed as I embarked on my hero's journey. Mm -hmm. I got back over the next several years. I got certified in coaching and breath work and gene keys and Mm -hmm. energy healing and herbalism and all of these things that were taking my interest, knowing that now I am ready to give of myself and my gifts. And again, it's been a organic unfoldment since then. It's been, you know, 10 plus years since I've returned and uh, it's been, been a journey, but that is a little micro nugget of my backstory. That is so good. I love that. I love how your divine team uh, put that billboard in front of you, that you had the courage and the curiosity to answer that call, not even knowing what it meant, what it was, where it would lead. That is it. And that defining moment. And then who living that primal way in Africa, you know, it's no surprise then how your primal activation in your beats and breath app <laughs> it brings that aliveness out in me like lion energy, you know, it, yeah, that I'm connecting those dots right now in a really visceral way. So thank you for that, that part of your story. So when you, when you come back to the States, where are you living after Africa while getting all these certifications? And and then how does that bridge to bringing the beats and breath app to life? Yeah, so I came back to Buffalo, New York, where I was originally from. Um, so that's where I left. That's where I returned. Um, and you know that that window of that six months after returning was extremely difficult. It was actually worse than going there. It was it was reverse culture shock. Yeah. So I go in the grocery store. I see ten different types of toothpaste. 50 types of shampoo. I was like, "What the fuck? What is this world? What are we doing?" Like it's just like like coming back into the jaws and the mouth of this consumerist machine that just like I and you know you don't notice it when you're when you're in it but when you're gone from it and you return you're like oh my god like it's just very invasive and so I went through a deep depression but over time I got out of that and I was able to get myself back on my feet and begin just to pursue things that were aligned with my heart mm-hmm. while working odd jobs, while starting a podcast and diving down these different rabbit holes. And, you know, that led me to speaking on stages in 2017 as a part of uh, the plant-based movement. I was doing personal growth in that movement and I was being invited to festivals. And there was another catalyzing moment that happened that anchored me and helped me realize one of my gifts. One of the yoga teachers had called off in this festival and said, we need help to facilitate something. Can you facilitate yoga? Although I practice yoga, I didn't feel comfortable facilitating. And I just said, Hey, you know what? I can teach people how to breathe. 
And she's like, okay, great. You're going on in 15 minutes. There's 150 people. Take them through something for 20 minutes. And I'm like, okay. So I just literally like my channel opened and I started guiding people through this breathing practice. And at the end, you know, people came up to me like, oh my God, that was so beautiful. Your voice was amazing. It was so profound and like all these things. And I was like, oh, okay, I have a gift here. Mm -hmm. And that's when I started going deeper into the rabbit hole of breath and all of that. And uh, the serendipitous moment happened to me in 2020 in the midst of the pandemic. It was August. I was facilitating a breathwork journey. This is three years from then, um, you know, from that 2017 event. I had gone through my certifications and I'm facilitating a breathwork journey at a men's circle with 60 guys out of my friend's house. And a guy was in the audience, had a profound experience, came up to me after and says, who makes your music? Mm. And I said, nobody, but I've held a vision for the past four months of somebody asking me this question to help make music because I have an idea of what I want to create that's something unique and original. And he goes, I might be that person. And that was Johnny Buffalo, who is my co-founder and dear friend in Beats and Breath, who is a savant, incredible musician. Mm -hmm. And we just, there was a soul brother link as if we had done this a million times before. We ended up creating some profound healing journeys, 33 minute breathwork journeys that spanned across the five elements. We called it Soul Rise. And then after that, and that sold and people had deep healing experiences, we have something here, we said. So we ended up creating Beats and Breath as a result of getting that name in a mushroom journey. And <laughs> <the history. laughs> Absolutely amazing. Oh my gosh. There are so many places that I want to go, but I'm just going to go with what's kind of making me feel most excited and alive right now. I want to talk about the music. Um, and of yeah. course, that's part of the vision that you held. You know, I remember watching um, one of your Instagram stories with Johnny Buffalo. So thank you, Johnny, for your beautiful magic and medicine as well. But I remember you saying something like when you guys met, like, I've been waiting for you. <laughs> it was just like so poetic. And it was like, yep, yeah. of course, this is how it works, right? So the vision that you held and then the experience that I get to have as a result of the two of you coming together for this divine assignment, I mean, people have asked me, well, how is it different? Like, what do you mean, you know, sonic technology and binaural beats and sounds of birds in the forest? And <laughs> like, and, and I listened to a, a, a wolf howling this morning, you know, that was the primal activation. They're all so uniquely different and they're all so perfect. So can we talk about what's happening inside those, okay, the different sensations, activations, whatever that is, because I don't even know how to language that. Yeah, so it's multi-layered and multi-dimensional. So the way we, sort of the underpinning of the creation itself, Johnny's background, he's a professional beatboxer. He's a class, he's trained in classical guitar, but he's also been in the hip hop and trap scene. So really the underpinning of the beats, reason for beats, it's 808 trap and hip hop beats, which for me, they move the primal energies, right? Mm -hmm. So that's the intention is that you're moving these lower three chakras of energies with that hard, beautiful, like primordial force of energy that's coming through. It's also layered with specific solfeggio frequencies that help to activate the rest of the experience. And those are subtle. You're not, the trained human ear is not going to hear those. We also layer it with binaural beats. And then we, of course, we bring in ancient instrumentation of flutes, gujongs, harps, and all of these things to layer those in on certain tracks. And of course, nature sounds, animal spirits, animal totems. Because when you combine all of that, plus, of course, my guidance, which is all very much channeled based on the intention or the theme that we've set for the specific session or journey, that all combine layers together to create the transformation. And really, again, we want to create, and our intention of creating this was to get people to breathe in a cool way. Like who doesn't want to breathe to a amazing oh. dope beat, you know, that just like gets your, your body going and gets you moving and it, it, again, it activates the soul energy. So if at the end of the day, if I were to classify it, the intention here is to really wake the soul up. 
Mm. So that's what it's like getting out of the ego, getting out of the mind, and it's waking up that primordial force of life force, pranic energy that's within you, which is your soul, and allowing that to come to life for you to fully feel alive and truly yourself. And connected, right? Exactly. Yeah. Truly yourself. I don't know if you mentioned it, but I feel like it needs to be mentioned. Also, the sounds of 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 nature, not just the animals, but the the yep. waves, the rivers, you know, just the waterfall frequencies. It's it's so incredibly beautiful. And for those listening who are wondering, like, ooh, is it too hip hoppy? Not at all. It's very shamanic. It feels very medicinal, very ceremonial, very sacred and powerful when needed, right? Like sometimes I'll be lying down and all of a sudden like, uh, well, I always do it in my living room um, in front of my altar. I live with animals at this point. I'm currently single. And um, so I have my space in my living room set up like a permanent sanctuary. It's kind of amazing. But I will sometimes be lifted from a lying down position to sit up. You know what I mean? Like my heart is pulled. And it's like, I'm being fully awakened. It's like, sit up. Right. And in a really humble, servant, listening way. Does that make sense? Yep. Yes. I'm like, yep. oh, there's something here that's deeper and I'm being activated. And it's a call for leadership. It's a call for oneness. It's a call for connection with all. So this mm. is it's just like so good. I cannot wait for our listeners to get their hands on these beautiful gifts of mm. yours and Johnny's. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. You know, to sum it up, it's it's ancient meets future, yes. right? And bringing those together. It's the shamanic way. Um, and I would never dare to call myself a shaman or anything like that. I just, I am a conduit for the, for the medicine of whatever wants to come through. But I deeply connect with the Native American way. I always have. I'm very connected to Native American wisdom. Um, so it's like bringing the technology of the new. We have all these beautiful ways of creating music. Um, and it's all original, right? And cutting edge, but mixed with the ancient sort of way as well. So it brings it together in a full spectrum experience is the way I describe it. And I have also said what people have said, it's like, it's meditation on rocket fuel. It really just like brings you alive. So sonic rocket fuel, let's give it like another layer. But also I want to talk about why I experience such breakthroughs, which I imagine the thousands, if not more that are you know, uh, partaking in your app and your your live experiences, your online experiences. There's so many different ways to work with you in this way. And I'm going to highly encourage everyone check out the app. You get a free trial, May as well. And I'd like to hear about your favorites. But what I wanted to say is it's real, right? This is an activation. It's a process and it requires integration for the embodiment that we're talking about, right? For that result, that that sensation, that experience. And, and so what happens for me, and I just want to put this out there uh, for purposes of, I guess, qualifiers, because I don't see anything on your app. And I was curious about sort of the introduction of what can happen in breath work on the app. Um, I'm sure there's a reason for that, but I'd like to hear your two cents on that after I share, because the very first time I worked with you, which was that Breathe with Cannabis workshop you did with Aaron Apke and Ryan, sorry, what's Ryan's last name? Ryan Sprague. Thank you. Um, my body went into, uh, you know, first of all, it froze. I was freezing. I put like seven blankets on and I was lying down. And then I noticed I started to shake convulsions. Right. And then it was almost like a, a fish on a hard surface, but I know enough because I've done enough breath work to know, Oh, I'm about to break through something really magical. Right. Something really important, something really dense. So I was willing to stay with it. At the same time, the brain began to freeze a little, right? It can be like that ice cream headache. I was like, oh, we're really in it now. So I was welcoming that, but I didn't give up. And I guess I want to say that, like, if you try it and you're in there for three, four minutes, the ego mind is so accustomed to not going the distance and giving up because of that instant gratification that so many of us unconsciously seek because we've been so programmed to do so. But if you recognize some of those things, keep going, stay with it. Because once I did, it was literally, it felt like five seconds later, it was like, I'm going to bail. I'm going to bail. This is too intense. And then I, I broke through and I got to hear a message from ascended master Jesus, you know? So it was like really important. I didn't know just a particular frequency of fear that was, that really was kind of suffocating me. Right. And it was so tucked in the teeniest crevice that it required all of that activation for me to break through and then I was able to be in the bliss and what we're talking about, but that was the arc, right? So shamanic, yeah. 
what is a shaman or what is a shamanic journey? It's being willing to go into the belly of the beast, the beast being the fear, which is a beautiful teacher, a master teacher. So it's just, I'm just offering all of that because that's been my experience or I'll yawn versus shake, but my body will have some somatic releases. But now because of your breath work, I can notice the energy going up, going down. I can notice where it is in my body and I can begin to play with it. Right. I notice also when it shoots out, right, the bottom of my feet or wherever. And it's just like, ah, this is getting really cool. Right. So can we speak about sort of what to look for or maybe what would be an introductory for those who are getting excited about trying on beats and breath? Yeah. And that's a great question. I'm glad that you asked that. And it's very important to talk about these things. In fact, we're redoing the app currently where we're going to have an introductory series Perfect. where I'm going to do a, a what, a why, and a how, as well as a seven, a seven day curated journey. That's an introduction for people that haven't interacted with breathwork before. So that's something we're actually building in this moment, which should be released in the next month or so. I'm excited. Um, so that's that's coming out. But yeah, you brought up some great points. So basically, let's just like really break it down in a very simplistic way because I'm all about practicality. Um, I'm all about really creating some groundedness to this conversation. You hear the word awakening and activation, you're like, holy shit, like what is this gonna be? <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's um, you know, at the end of the day, what we're really looking at is we are switching on different aspects of ourselves, right? That haven't really maybe been interacted with before from a brainwave standpoint, from a somatic nervous system standpoint. So let's talk about the nervous system for a second. So most people, if not all people are operating in a fight or flight response, fight or flight or freeze response, when which the sympathetic nervous system is activated adrenaline and cortisol levels are through the roof we just have to look at this world that we are living in the world we are living in is chaotic it's fast paced digitally driven we are being flooded with millions and millions of messages on a daily basis the push and pull between everything we have to do it creates this chaotic internal environment within ourselves and you know, what this is doing and how this is affecting us is creating a lot of, you know, just deep seated stress and anxiety and overwhelm. Mm. And this affects us physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually on every single level. And so when we're engaging in a breathwork practice, we're essentially retuning and recalibrating our nervous system and our bodies to receive what it is we're downloading through. And so there is that process which you spoke of, which is sort of the in-between state. When the nervous system is moving from a sympathetic state to a parasympathetic state, which is going to be more receptive, more grounded, more relaxed, more open, that state, in order to get there, you have to cross the bridge, right? And this proverbial bridge that you cross is the bridge from stress, anxiety, fear to that state that I just mentioned. And you get to that middle point where you're not really used to living in that, that state that I talked about over here. And so you might go through a little bit of a journey where things start to come up, right? So let's just break this down a little bit further. When we look at programming and conditioning, which we've all had, we've all endured some form of trauma and wounds in our life. We're often, most of the time, not equipped to deal with that because of unconscious programming and conditioning as kids, and our parents don't know how to deal with that emotionally. We stuff all of that down. It not only gets buried in our subconscious, but it actually gets buried deep within the body and in our physical vessel. And what happens is this stored energy creates tension. It creates, in long term, illness and disease. And what this does to the body is it keeps us in this tense, constricted state where we're in resistance. And what we're doing during this process, is we're opening like a flower and allowing ourselves to let go of that energy that we've carried for so long. And the subconscious mind is used to carrying that energy. The subconscious mind is used to holding on. And so we have to go through this process 
of transmutation and alchemy to be able to release what has been stuck, what has been stored in the body and in the mind. And as we allow ourselves to release that, we come deeply into that open and free state I was talking about. But we go through this battle internally sometimes and it becomes hard, especially in the breath retentions. We're holding our breath and we're doing all these things. But all of it is to turn on the self-healing mechanism so that we can exist in our true state, which is whole, which is prosperous, which is free. That mm -hmm. is a, and, and joyful and fulfilled. That is our true state, our natural state of, of being. And that's what we're getting to. But of course, we may have the obstacles to overcome in between. So I know I spoke a lot there. I hope that makes sense and was said in a way that people can understand. But that's how I perceive it. I love that. The proverbial bridge to, yeah, it's it's the journey of beats and breath, right? Heal, awaken, and manifest. Yeah. And thank you. It was so beautifully put, so easy to follow. And I appreciate you grounding the conversation because that's what you do. You understand the science and the technology behind what it is. You are certified in these areas. I go through the experience and I'm like, ooh, let me just share, you know, what that felt like, what that, you know, was like, Um and so I appreciate having that insight. And um, and what I wanted to share with my audience is the manifest part. It's real. You know, mm. I, I've only been working with your work for about two months now. And I feel like it's been with me now for a minute. Like it feels like a year, right? But what is time anyway these days? Um, but I, I was sharing with you before I hit record. And I, and I, I, I don't say this in any braggy way whatsoever. I'm just letting y'all know that not only do my relationships feel more aligned and healthier than ever, there's that giving, receiving that Aaron Apke likes to talk about, right? Um, but also I had the strongest first quarter of this year ever in my business, in the history of my business, but it's the quality of the connection too. It's a completely different experience as a guide and through my launches and a leader in this space. And I, I just don't think there's any coincidence whatsoever that I'm going in on a daily basis. I was thinking about it. Okay, if I've done almost, I think, 92 sessions in two months, that's basically minimum two a day, right? I can't wait for you to enable the, just put it on repeat. <laughs> that's coming, but it only takes a second. But I, I just don't find any coincidence in that. But I also want to now weave in a really other important part, which is what you mentioned in the top in your intro, finding the gene keys and helping to establish that soul map, if you will. Because it was when I got introduced to the gene keys for the second time after two and a half years of kind of dismissing it, feeling a little stirred two and a half years ago, but it's like, hmm thought it was boring, right? All of those conscious thoughts of like, or excuse me, unconscious thoughts of like, yeah, I don't really know. Maybe I'll just stick with what's easier, like the other things. But when I was ready, I was ready. So I want to thank you for bringing that into my life and my angels and my guides for bringing me to that as well. But the gene keys, can we talk about how you're weaving that into your mission? Because what I now do is the awareness of my prime gifts and the shadows I can bring that in through the art of contemplation, which you're going to share about in a moment, I imagine, into my breathwork journeys. And that is where, and this may sound woo and a little out there for maybe you, but there's an activation that happens on a whole cosmic level, but yet brings me home to my body in a way that I'm more clear than I've ever been. And so, yeah, I don't even know if there's a question in there, but I know you'll know what to pick up when I'm trying to throw down that's in the field. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, this... The gene keys in itself are a vast world of wisdom that for me personally, and I'll, I'll explain to people what they are, and, and again, in a very grounded and practical way, so people can really digest the information that we're putting out here. Um, you know, it's, it's a system um, that really can support you in your own self-discovery process that blends your astrological makeup, where the planets were when you were born, mixed with the Chinese I Ching and the 64 archetypes, which are all very important to create this holistic picture of information that it provides you in your own personal profile that really help you to deepen into who you are and why you are here. These are the questions we ask when we get on the journey, right? When we embark on our hero's journey, we ask these deep, profound 
questions. And oftentimes those answers don't come right away. They're an exploration process. We go on the journey. We embark on the inner quest in order to find the answers that we seek, to find the clarity that we seek. So essentially what the Gene Keys is doing, it's combining these two aspects putting them together to bring you this beautiful profile, this map of your soul, as you mentioned. And as you go through this journey, which it's constructed very much like a journey, you are waking up parts of yourself that may have been dormant. And it speaks a lot to genetics and to your DNA. The premise is that these codes are hidden deep within your DNA. And when you go through the process of contemplation, the art of contemplation, which I'll explain in a moment, you begin to wake up these codes. They turn on, right? It's almost like, you know, the way I look to like, like to look at it is like, let's say a, a lock, you know, those locks you spin and you have to get them to certain points in order to get that three digit code, right? Spin it forward, get to this number, spin it back, get to this number and to this number, and then it unlocks. That's what you're doing through your contemplation. Now, when you go through this, the journeys are constructed in these sequences. So the first sequence of the gene keys is the activation sequence. It's about discovering your genius, your higher purpose in this lifetime. The second sequence is all about opening your heart in relationships, opening your heart in life. And that's going through this process of transmuting these core wounds in your formative years, zero to 21. Mm -hmm. Then you go through the top, which is this beautiful triangle at the top called the pearl sequence. Mm -hmm. And this is all about liberating your prosperity. It's all about the new paradigm of business and money and how we're meant to really create in this new world that's being born. Now, all of this wisdom that is being given to you is these moving through these different frequencies, which is in the gene keys, it's the shadow, the gift, and the city. So you have 11 gene keys in your profile. As you go through these sequences, you awaken the wisdom within yourself and you have to begin to work with the shadows, right? The unconscious level of fear that you hold within you. And we all have shadows from suppressed and repressed emotional energy, but we also incarnate with yeah. shadows that we're here to learn from. And so the external uh, shadows that we gain through our own life experience, they pair with the sort of inner shadows that we've incarnated with to help us overcome certain challenges. And we have these breakthrough moments where we discover, we unleash, and we express our, our authentic gifts. Mm -hmm. And that is where things become very magical, right? And so through this process of contemplation, which is essentially reading the transmissions from the Gene Keys, listening to the audio contemplations, and also, which we'll touch on a little bit, breathing, we begin to awaken and activate these codes. And once they're activated, your life begins to transform in the most miraculous ways, which you've touched on just a little bit earlier. Mm. So really what we're doing here is a process of alchemy. Mm. And if you are in this lifetime, if you are listening to this message right now, and you know you are here to be that leader and change maker, you are here to share your gifts with the world. There's no better system in my mind to uncover this wisdom than through the path of the gene keys and working with the power of your breath. So I'm going to pause there. There was a lot and I want to digest the information because I, there's a lot more to be said, but I want to just push the pause button and allow you to kind of take over for a moment. Yeah. So good, by the way. Uh, and, and never too much. That was so well said and beautifully put and I followed along and and I appreciate that because I do think that for the average bear out there, you know, to sort of embark on the journey of getting acquainted with the gene keys or the hologenetic profile, it can feel a bit intimidating. It can feel confusing. Um, and I believe that that is just based on my own experience. It's because we've been so deeply programmed to be accustomed to like the quick fix, right? Go in, get out. Oh, that's my answer. Go to that retreat, go to that seminar, listen to that podcast. I'm done say goodbye, right? To all of the fear. And what I love about this journey of the gene keys is that it allows me to understand how sacred the shadow truly is. 
And that's the part that I don't, I wasn't fully present to until I, I started to understand the gift that the shadow brings, the gift that the shadow offers and provides if we are willing and courageous enough just to go in. And you can be compassionately curious, you know, like I was with a beloved family member yesterday and we were in the park and I'm in the middle of my, I think, sixth launch in a short period of time. Promised I would never do this to my nervous system again. You just be so, so, so full on the schedule. And um, and so I had very little inside to offer this person in the park that was only in town for like a day or two. And um, and I noticed that I had resistance. And then I was like, why am I in resistance to this precious moment of just an hour at my favorite park where those trees that are disguised, they're, they are, they're archangels. They showed me how to put my life back together again two and a half years ago in the midst of a profound deconstruction slash awakening. And, and so here I am and everything is working for us. Beautiful day, gorgeous sunlight. My pup is obsessed with, with her. And I found myself separating and judging, doing the things that my gene keys show me I will be doing, right? Living in conflict, living in turbulence, living in domination. And I was like, why, why is this? I noticed it was there. She doesn't notice a thing. She's just sharing, right? Trying to connect, open her heart to me. And I was guarded and I was like, oh, this is it right here. Like, remember, it's all just contemplation. And I'm like, it's happening in real time. I love this person. I want to open my heart. I'm in my, sh oh, shadow is up. This is such a conditioned frequency and inside this relationship. This is not about her. It's about me. So I noticed it and I was like, okay, what's the word? What's the word? And it was like, move into synergy. Just the synergy of the elements, nature, the trees, the sun, the earth, right? We were being held by Mother Gaia. We were late. And so I said, what was that song that we loved when we were kids? And she was like, oh, it was like, you can relax now by Shauna Noel. And people know it from the medicine space. And, and I said, lay down. And so we lay down the blanket and I said, and I played the song and we were on our backs and we were holding hands. And it was just like four minutes of tears and just connection. And at one point I put my hand on her third eye and she cried, she's my baby sister. And all of that happened as a result of me being aware of what was coming in between us. And it was shadow. And then what would bridge that gap? And what would I need to do? And it was like, just lay down my own armor of my day, of my launches, of my busyness, of the shadow, and be willing to operate from gift that took us to communion in the most beautiful way to the point where she shared later, that was the most special moment I've ever experienced with you as my big sister. Thank you. And so I share that story because A, it's so fresh. B, this is the gift of what Gene Keys can offer us if we're just willing to look at it. Didn't expect to share that story. It just wants to come up right now because I do the deep inner work. I teach the deep inner work. I lead by example all the time. And yet where I felt so stuck at the beginning of the year was this. I didn't know how to unhook. And it felt like if I don't do something, I don't know if I can keep living this way. You know what I mean? And it, it liberated me. I honestly, between your breath work, wow, I'm really moved. That's what the tears are. Between the breath work and gene keys and the way that you help me understand how those work together, I feel like you saved my life, but you didn't. You gave me access. You brought me on the bridge that you walk and continue to walk authentically every day so that I could save myself. So I just want to say thank you, Chris, because that is what the Gene Keys offers. And it's so subtle, but it's so deep and profound. So I'll pause here. Maybe you want to share a story about how Gene Keys has served you or your relationship or people that you know, or anything that might want to come through as a result of my share. Well, first off, just honoring you in that share and everything that you brought forth there in such an authentic and vulnerable way. I see you and so so deeply and mm. deeply appreciate your just radical expression and and how you <laughs> brought that through. Like for me, that was extremely moving, and I just appreciate you so much for that. And you know what what you're speaking to 
right now and and what is very important to mention and what's really coming through me right now and a very central practice of the gene keys which anchors in contemplation is the pause yes which you did right you took a you took all of the things that you've been moving through doing for your business put it on hold even for that little moment in the with your sister and anchored into the moment which is what is what the pause does when we pause we stop the doing the the sympathetic nervous system of going 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 and we anchor into the parasympathetic and we we come into the present moment we relax we breathe deeper we open ourselves up and the breath is a very key uh ingredient in the pause mm. pause with the breath mixed together creates the transformation so that's what is Really, if we were to boil it to simplicity, even if you did not go to the Gene Keys and you did not do any of the contemplation, you didn't look at any of the book or go through your profile, if you simply just take time every single day to pause mm. and to breathe, you will experience transformation. Mm. So I wanted to bring that full circle because that's very important to mention um, because it's a foundational practice. We have gotten extremely complex with how we're, we need to heal and do all these million things to heal and fix and change ourselves. It's like, no, let's come back to simplicity. Let's come back to the pause. Let's come back to the breath. That in itself will set you free. Now, over time, what happens here is that we're creating subtle biochemical changes, which when we change on the in, inner planes, our external planes naturally begin to mirror that. So when you anchor in deeper levels of peace, abundance, freedom, joy, mm -hmm. fulfillment within your own somatic body, when you feel that, that is mirrored back to you in every aspect of your life. And that is exactly what we're doing here. It is magic, but it's not because this is how reality works. This is how true alchemy works. It's just that, nothing more, nothing less. And so based on your story and what you shared, you know, for me personally, I have so many stories to share, so many ways I've been touched by this work uh, in ways in which I couldn't even possibly do the due diligence of explaining because it's so deep, but I've had many opportunities where I've been at the brink of life where I have been literally in such a deep, dark night of the soul where I didn't want to live anymore. There's been so many moments where I've saying, fuck it, I'm done. I'm throwing in the towel. I literally don't want to live. Two years ago, I went, um, went on a dark room retreat. I sat in the darkness for five days. Mm. And that was a moment where I had to really come face to face with my own ego. And mm. it ripped me apart, just <laughs> obliterated everything. Mm. And there was decisions I had to make there in that, in those moments of giving up, leaving that dark room or staying put with the shadow. And if there's a message that I can convey here out of all of the messages that I've shared, it's that the more you work with, you embrace, you accept your own shadow, the more you are propelled into the light, into mm -hmm. the gift of who you are, why you are here. That is the process of alchemy, of transmutation that we've all come here to work with. And when we can bravely, courageously confront ourselves, our fears, and we can go through that quote unquote death process, that is when we are reborn. And this is a cycle that we go through throughout life. It's not just one thing we do and we are here. It's a it's a it's an unfoldment. It's a peeling back of the layers. Mm -hmm. But all of this work is worth it because you whoever you are listening to this are here to create a legacy. You are here to create a kingdom, a queendom that you are here to then share with the world, even in your family on the smallest of levels and your children, which is so powerful, your community and the world at large, all of that as a ripple effect to then create the elevation 
and the enhancement, the expansion of human consciousness and what is happening on this planet currently right now. Ah, beautifully said and a wonderful segue as we begin to round out the, the closing of this conversation, there will be more for sure, but can we talk about what's happening on the planet and the, yeah. the, the gift inside the collective shadow that we are experiencing? And I also want to just speak for a moment to what you just sh- said about the samsara cycles of death, rebirth, death, rebirth, death, rebirth. I think, I think a lot of people, including myself, even a few years ago thought, oh, you just awaken once and then you're done. You know, I was like, no, "No, this is a lifelong journey. It's not a finite destination, but it's, it does become magical. And you do feel more empowered to when you, when you can actually pause to, to witness what's happening all to serve us and the highest and best for all that you can then empower yourself to expand beyond the shadow, but recognize the gift in the shadow to get to, of course, the deepest desire of elevated frequencies. But there is a reverence and a devotion that is also there. And and, and so I'm just curious, speaking to that, because that's the journey that we're on as a, as a listenership and a viewership to Fire and Soul. So we're all on the same-ish page, but we've got different ideas and versions, of course, of how this plays out and our role within it. So I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on what's happening and your role inside of what's happening, not only on a, on a micro, but on a macro scale. Yeah. So let's start on the macro scale. We'll go to the micro scale and I'll wrap it up with how this all plays into really uh, the process, the journey of manifestation and becoming the powerful creator that you are. Mm -hmm. So what's happening on the planet right now, as I perceive it, as I've witnessed it within my own journey, and also just witnessing the collective energies that are happening right now, there's a reckoning that's happening. Mm -hmm. And there's no mistake of what's happening. There's nothing out of place. It's all perfect. Everything is happening as it needs to. So I'm going to preface it with that. But what we are seeing is really the laws of the universe playing out. Mm -hmm. And what the laws of the universe say, of course, amongst many things is that all truth will eventually be revealed that all shadows have to come to light that's the natural law of things and there's no way of this universe being created and birthed without that law in place and living specifically in this plane this three-dimensional plane of duality on this earth there we are working with positive and negative forces we don't label them good or bad they just are they're all they're both catalysts positive forces are catalysts, negative forces are catalysts. They're all here working together out of the darkness life is born. And so on a collective level, we see the reckoning, the demolishing, the collapsing of structures and systems economically, politically, financially that have been around for many years. And these systems have all been designed to control, dominate, and enslave humanity to keep humanity in a certain tight box that really is constricting. It's tense, it's it's tight, and it uh, creates a lot of inner turmoil in the sense that we are just fully in survival mode, where we are living just on a very basic level and therefore caught in what I was mentioning before, a sympathetic fight Uh, fight, flight, or freeze state where our nervous systems are jacked up and we're just completely living in the root chakra and the unbalanced expression of that, where we also look at, and this is a major theme that I'm touching on right now um, that's really streaming through me, the oppression of the feminine. Now you look at the structures that have been in place. It's a very rooted, it's a shadow expression of the, of the masculine. Okay. And so in the shadow expression of the masculine, you have control, force, dominance, violence, etc. Now, when I speak of masculine and feminine, I'm not speaking about genders. I'm just speaking about the energies at play here. And there's been a reversal of energies. What I perceive to be happening right now is the rise of the feminine. It's not the rise of the 
the gender of the feminine. Yes, that's happening, but it's the rise of the feminine within all of us because the feminine and the ways of the feminine, the creative, the intuitive, the receptive ways in which the feminine expresses in its divine nature is wanting to come to the surface. And the earth is a very feminine being, Mother Gaia. She is in an uproar right now. So you have this, this compassionate yet rage that is really wanting to come forth. Ooh. And I feel that internally, even as a man expressing as a man, that feminine energy that has been oppressed is rising within and it's creating a lot of anger and frustration. And this is what we're going to see right now. We're recording this podcast. It's April 4th, 2024. We're in the middle of eclipse. We're in airy season. The energy is explosive. It is ready. It's volatile. And this is where big change tends to happen. And we see the, the dissolution of structures. And we also see more control mechanisms come in. But there's nothing to fear here. It's more so what needs to be seen and witnessed, the atrocities that have been done to people, humanity, this planet, animals, the earth, nature as a whole needs to be seen and witnessed in order for us to rise above. And that is... Yes, a collective job of using our voices, using our, 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 our gifts, but it is also an inside job where we have to transmute our own internal shadows in order for us to rise in our own personal expression. So all of this is making way for a beautiful uh, climax or crescendo of energy that we're going to start to see over the next two to three years. But make no mistake, there's going to be chaos. There's going to be fear. There's going to be things that are going to be what seem to be very intense and profound coming to the surface. But in the end, I'm very optimistic for how this all plays out for everybody involved, because I already know the future timeline. Light has mm -hmm. taken over. This way in this new paradigm we're birthing on this earth has taken over and we are rooted in a higher consciousness and awareness. But we have to go deep into the underworld in order to ascend, right? It's the dissension process that we don't talk about enough, which is very important. The grief that has to be felt, the anger that has to be felt in order for us to rise into a new octave and expression of our truth and true selves. Oh, that was so good. Thank you for that beautiful channeled wisdom that came through right there. You know, you're the first person that is giving me some context and clarity to the rage that also has been coming up through me. That's that feels very uncharacteristic, right? But it's because I'm I'm breaking loose so much of the density. But there have been a few times, like at least six or seven times over the past few months where in addition to all the manifestation as I awaken and, and heal and all of these beautiful ma magical essences that have that are my cosmic birthright, right? But I'm also like exploding in rage. Of, and sometimes it's just a guttural scream that needs to come out of me. And like, yes. I could literally be in my home off of something, you know, and it's like my body will tense up and I'm just like, oh, fuck, that felt so good, you know? And, and I'm just aware that the release needed to happen. And I know that sounded really intense. My audience knows that I am intense, but but I'm just giving permission like to the activation of all of the emotions that we have been programmed to not look at, to suppress, to deny, to avoid, to escape, to numb. And I did that really well most of my life, you know, and I have deep compassion for those that are still in that trap. And that's why we are here. There is another way. And I'm on the path too. I mean, I'm, my stuff is up all the time, but it's so cool to, to become aware of it. I feel empowered, right? And I have to say it's through the breath work and the gene keys. And of course, all of my devotional time in nature and at my altar and just all of that inner world alchemy, it all goes together. So the invitation that I want to invite my listeners and viewers on is take what resonates here, even if it doesn't make sense and move forward on it. Take that inspired action. That's what fire and soul is all about, right? Inspired action from an awakening soul to deepen into your divine alignment. Take what calls and then trust that whatever and however you're supposed to deepen, you will. But I also love to know what would be the invitation is your call to action as we, uh, yeah, we probably going to wrap up in the next few minutes, Chris. Yeah. You know, just quickly what comes through here and 
tuning into what's alive and what's present in this current ecosystem and this current uh, sphere we find ourselves in, it is what I mentioned before. It's the pause and it's the breath. And I want to emphasize this um, because these two components, the need to slow down, mm. the need to come back into harmony and balance with our bodies, with our minds, with our hearts. And it's through the breath after that pause mm. that we bring ourselves into this beautiful alignment. If we are in the trenches, if we are in the darkness, if we are in the shadow, breathe. If we are in the light and we are experiencing ecstatic bliss and we are here and really rooted in our purpose, breathe. All of that is connecting us back to our soul. It is connecting us back to our truth. It is connecting us back to our power. And when you are rooted in your power, you are unstoppable. Mm -hmm. You are here as what I perceive to be the awakening of this light warrior that mm -hmm. is coming and being birthed through all of us to use your voice, to be in that place where you are in a full fuck yes to life and you are <laughs> using your life force to serve, to empower, to inspire and all of that. But all of that comes from that pause, from slowing down, from contemplation, from really going within, doing that deep work that needs to be done. But then also on the other side of that, equally rising and then taking that inspired action. That's the balance of the feminine and the masculine together the pause, the sitting, the feeling, the expressing, and then moving into that, that visionary state, that focus state where you are serving the whole and you are in service to life. Oh, my friend, that's Christ consciousness right there. That's living in the heart. That is, that is the way. Thank you very much for being a beautiful, benevolent leader in this space, for walking your own bridge I imagine when you didn't know that it was a bridge you were building, <laughs> right? No. Walk no. each step, right? And it's just like, what, are the, what is that old saying, right? Leap and the net will appear. It's like, we got to be courageous and first take that that step. And uh, and you've done so. And I imagine it's just, uh, yeah, it's, it's a beautiful ripple effect that's going to impact many, many, many lives. For those who feel called to connect with you, to learn from you, study under you, be inspired by you, Beats and Breath app for sure. I will link that in the show notes. Where else is the best way to connect? Um, my website has everything, all the links to coaching, to breath work, to everything. It's all multiple different projects I have going on, programs, ChristopherAugust.co, uh, ChristopherAugust.co, and then also on Instagram at Christopher underscore August. Um, is a good way to connect with me if you want to. Um, but nonetheless, you know, like we're all in this together and I'm happy to support anybody that is feeling this call, right? That is feeling this fire. And I'm continuously running breath work um, and Gene Keys programs together, combining those two modalities and as well as my background in coaching to really help people create transformation. So if anything of his interest to you today, anything resonate with you, I'm looking forward to, to speaking with all of you. Yeah, beautiful. And I will say too, I plan on being in your next Breathwork Gene Keys combo uh, course. And I would love anyone who feels called to join us. I know you're still finalizing those dates. I'm not an affiliate, y'all. I'm not making a dime. This is because I believe in it. And I rarely, rarely say, hey, come join me. But um, I feel that strongly about this. And I know this is the beginning of, of many more beautiful blessings uh, that we will get to co-create together. Any final thoughts or anything that you wished you would have been asked that needs to be shared or wants to be expressed before we we wrap for, for reals? <laughs> mm. Mm. Yeah, just inviting everybody as just a practice, just to, for a one minute practice is placing your hand over your heart space perhaps both of your hands left over right, right over left, and really feeling the anchor in this moment of this breath, this breath of life, this breath that supports you, that guides you, that nourishes you, that keeps you alive, that catalyzes you to freedom, to joy, to peace. Just inviting everybody to take one strong, deep breath in, holding it and feeling that energy and exhaling slowly into your heart space.
and just sitting on empty. Feeling what's alive and what's present. And just coming back into that sacred breath and repeating as you need, knowing that that breath is your greatest, most profound superpower that you have. And the best part is it's free. It's here for you right now. Sending everybody so much love, so much peace. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you for all of you who have listened to this. And I look forward to speaking with all of you soon. Mm. Oh, thank you for that. Until we meet again, my friend. Peace.